Hey guys and welcome back to the Spring Bling series. I have a few things I want to talk to you about today and if you're wondering what happened to my hair and I'm supposed to be blow drying and flat ironing and stuff like that, we're going to talk about that and we're going to also talk about some ratchetness. So guys, you know my previous video was about finding the right time to do my hair or finding the right time to do long natural hair. And when I got through making the video, like I said in the video yesterday, it was around 2.30. So I went on and uploaded the um, file of me recording the video and I edited the video and everything. And by the time I got finished, it was like maybe 4.30 or something. So I said, I'm gonna go and finish, you know, get started on my hair and I never did. And I got on the telephone, I went outside, started playing around in the yard. And something about when I have to do my hair, I don't know, I don't know if it's mental, but I put it off and I put it off and I put it off. It's like a, a slight dread. And sure enough, before I knew it, girl, let me tell you, I didn't get started on my hair until like 7.15 or 7.20. Now, had I just went on and just got started with my hair, I could have been finished and, you know, probably had enough energy to do all of my hair. But unfortunately, I didn't do that. So the only thing I did was shampoo and condition. But what made me... What made me tired was the detangling session. Now, I did comb out my hair from my French braids, but by me leaving my braids in so long, the hair still, it, it just kept locking up and intertwining. And I keep telling myself, take those braids down at least in the fifth, well, at least the fourth week. Then I will have the intertwining matting situation. Cause like I said before, our hair naturally locks up and it mats. And that's what our hair does. And when I leave my braids in too long, cause I think I left them man, maybe, six to eight no six or seven weeks something like that you know the longer we leave our hair braided and twisted the hair thinks it's supposed to stay that way and sure enough i tried to you know detangle my hair yesterday and it just kept matting up not as bad as it did like a year ago when i had that horrible matte session when i had my hair up for nine weeks i would never leave my hair braided that long again so after having a very long detangling session which was probably like an hour hour and a half by the time I got through all that I said I ain't doing nothing else you hear me and another thing another reason why I'm not going I didn't want to blow dry and flat on my hair last night because my ends feel a little dry now my hair been braided for like I guess for the last five or six months and um my hair feels dry now, I, you know, you, got, you guys know I did say I was going to use a sulfate shampoo. Uh, my hair was dry before I did the sulfate shampoo. But that was to be expected. I was expecting to have drier feeling hair because I had to do a deep cleanse and shampoo all that gunk out. And let me tell you guys, when I saw that shampoo and the hair, the water rinsing out the shampoo in, this, in the sink, it was dirty. So I had to do a deep cleanse. It doesn't feel that dry, but I'm not used to my hair feeling like this. So I didn't want to just go in there and start blow drying and flat iron, putting heat on it and make it dry it out and then it starts breaking. So I'm going to have to do some kind of um, steam treatment or another deep condition before I add heat to it. And I might need my ends trimmed too. Um, my hair hasn't been trimmed since last year in June. So we'll see about that. But I am going to still do a length check. But I, I just got to get my hair back, get the moisture back in there and, uh, you know, have the time and patience. So that's what happened. Also, let me tell you guys, I had to use two conditioners last night because I ran out of conditioner. So these are my favorite conditioners. Well, actually, all my conditioners are my favorite. But I don't know. For some reason, I tend to go to my... Super Sweet Back Treatment by Miss Jessie's. I like this one a lot. So I had put this in my hair, but I ran out like in my last, I put my hair in four sections. So I ran out a little bit like up here. So I had to go on and use this Miss Jessie's Rapid Recovery Treatment Deep Conditioner and uh, you know, finish the job. So let me tell you the difference between these two. This one here, the Super Sweet Back Treatment by Miss Jessie's, it smells like bubble gum. I know a lot, some people say they don't really like the smell of it because it does smell sweet and um, bubble gumlish. Bubble, 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 bubble gumlish. I like bubble gum. I like candy. I like sweet. And this one really just has a regular, eh, kind of like a mild smell. But the difference between the two is 
the sweet back, the super sweet back treatment is for hair growth. Now you guys, I've really, I don't know, I've never seen a, well, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I was gonna say I've never really seen deep conditioners that tell you specifically what stuff is for. I don't know, I could be lying. But this one is saying this one's for hair growth. So the sweet back is for hair growth. And the rapid recovery treatment is for dry and brittle ends. Yep, dry and brittle. So I do see a slight difference in between the two. This one's, I don't know, it seems like it might be slightly thinner. And this one's like make my hair real juicy and stuff. But I like them both. So yeah, so I ran out of conditioner. Luckily, I had some more left over. Now, let's get to the ratchet part of this video. I, I've been out today. I, I had to take care of a little bit of business and I decided to come home and relax for a minute, eat my um, healthy meal and watch a little bit of my recorded television. And I said, well, let me see what I want to watch today. And I am recording the Bad Girls Club. Now, you probably said, well, Nezzy, why would you watch the Bad Girls Club? Those girls get really ignorant. And sometimes I want to see some ignacy. That's not a word. But I like, you know, sometimes you just get tired of seeing the old goody two shoes. And I just want to look at a little bit of ratchetness. But these girls, they're going to turn something up. I was trying to get into love and hip hop, but they was, they was beyond ratchet to me. They was just more like an orgy fest. Okay, they, I don't know. I don't want to call them stupid. But I just can't get with them too much, so I end up, I ended up not watching them anymore. But I know a lot of people like love and hip hop. That's not my favorite ratchet show. Bad Girls Club is one of them. Although I, I didn't watch them last season, they weren't ratchet enough for me. <laughs> but these girls right here, these sisters, baby, they gonna turn something up and be right there. So the poll will be me asking you: Do you like ratchet reality shows? And if you want to, my question to you would be, what is your favorite Ratchet reality show? Or what is your top three? Because, you know, sometimes we can't boil Ratchetness down to just one. You know, just write down all those little shows that you like and let me know what your Ratchetness is. I'm going to tell you what my other Ratchet show is. Honey, these, these old birds, they same age I am. As a matter of fact, I'm older than most of them except for Big Ant. And, yeah, they're in their 40s. They be clowning the, the mob wives. Baby, they, they be looking good, but they cuss and the... And they just act so ghetto. They just that Staten Island ghetto. You know what I'm saying? And so I love watching them because they look good when they act crazy. Mama's baby. She's the mama baby, baby. Girl, mama's baby. That's my mama's baby. D my mama baby. That's my mama baby. Hey. Good girl. Say bye bye to YouTube. Hi. Say hi. You always lick it. Don't you lick your mom? Okay, guys. That is it. That is it. That is it.